Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Pascal Marschiff and this is Chef's Choice. In this video I'll be talking about Portugal's Festival da Canção, Candidates and Songs. But if you're interested in hearing my reviews about the entries for UK's You Decide that were released today or Norway's Melody Compris entries that will be released on Friday, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on them. But now let's go to Europe's southwestern corner and look at Portugal's Eurovision hopefuls. Overall, I'm still amazed at how unique Portugal keeps their selection. There's no other country that sounds even close to them. And there's not one song that sounds generic or cheaply made. So I pull my head to them for that. On the other hand, their unique sound that is so subtle, soft and slow makes it hard to not fall under the radar in the contest. So even though I like most of the songs, they won't have an easy battle ahead of them in Tel Aviv. They found the perfect song two years ago, but completely fell through the grid last year. So let's try to find out where they land this time by looking at my uh, top 16. <laughs> Sixteen, Surma Puina. I don't know how this could be performed at Eurovision at all, because the vocals that are there, and there's not much of it, are completely wired through a synthesizer, and that's not going to work at Eurovision. At times it also sounds a bit like a remix of Au Jardin, so I'm completely confused. <laughs> Fifteen, Dan Riverman, Lava. He has such a beautiful voice and I kind of feel bad to put him this low, but the song just doesn't go anywhere. It's very flat, there's no journey, no start, no middle, no end, and therefore it's also missing its power moment that I think is needed at Eurovision. <laughs> Fourteen, Miladores, de Baix, de Baix do Luar. It's kind of the female version of Dan Riverman, because I have the same issue with it that there's not enough happening to make me really excited for it. It's very loungy and laid back, but I don't think that's, that these are the right characteristics for Eurovision. There's still a bit more going on though, which makes this my place for <laughs> Thirteen, Ana Claudia, Inercia. I would love to hear more of these short percussion hits in the background. If they were stronger, I think it would make the whole song a lot more powerful. Without them, it feels a bit like an unseasoned, flavorless meal. <laughs> Madre Paz, Mundo a Mudar. This reminds me a little of this old Sony commercial with the colored bouncy balls jumping through the streets of San Francisco. I enjoy this song a lot. It's so comfy and relaxed, but it does sound a little like an early 2000s rom-com soundtrack. Also, I'm confused about the photograph of the four guys, but watch here. Eleven, NBC, Equality. He's got a great voice, let's get that out, out of the way first. And I'm sure this would be a great album track, but I don't think it would be the first single of the album that makes everyone buy. <laughs> I'm starting to repeat myself, because I could say the exact same thing for this song as I did for the last. It's very casual and well composed, just not exciting enough to make it higher on my list. Nine, Mariana Bragada, Mardosse. 
Again, I think this song is lacking a bit of seasoning, but there's some spice here and there. It comes to life at some point and there's some tragedy behind it that makes it interesting to me. She has a strong voice that can pull you in, but I would like to hear a revamp with a bit more oomph. <laughs> Lara La Quiz, O Lugar. I think I would like this much more if there weren't all the other entries around it. Compared to them, it feels a bit too much like what the rest of Europe does, and it's losing this strong Euro Portuguese identity that the other two songs have. But I think outside of this contest, I would like this. It has a good rhythm and a good voice. <laughs> Ela Limão. Somehow I really like this, somehow I don't. Again, it's lacking the climax in the chorus for me and I feel like it should be played outdoors on the grass with the sun shining softly and golden. I don't know if it fits onto an edgy and cold arena stage though. But it's different than the others and that's what I like about it. Acordamos e voamos para longe, eu não queria Se isto não é para sempre, então dá mais um dia Six, João Campos, AOK. I'm getting a little bit mad because they have such interesting and well-made songs, but they all lack the salt and pepper. Usually Portuguese cuisine is delicious, but somehow with these songs, they don't dare to use their spices. It's a shame because it, it would be a beautiful song. Mas, meu amigo, nós somos iguais Pois eu faço o que tu fazes, não é demais Pois já chega de pisar o chão Hoje sigo o meu sonho, hoje sigo tua mão Five, Felipe Caíla, hoje This is an interesting mix between the typical Portuguese sound and the pop from the rest of Europe I think with a, with a strong contemporary performance this could be quite good I would just like to turn up the speed a little. It's a bit slow for what it wants to be, I think. Or Kalema, a dois. This is probably the most European song out of the 18 that feels very much like contemporary pop music. It still feels Portuguese, but at the same time it blends in nicely with what we're more used to. So it might not be the worst choice to send to Tel Aviv. But on the other hand, it loses a bit the originality and uniqueness of the other songs that I put higher than this. But it's a well-deserved fourth place. <laughs> Conan Osiris, Telemoveis. It starts off a little strange, but once the beat kicks in, the oriental vibe starts to make sense. It takes some getting used to, and it surely won't be liked by everyone. And I think without the ele electronic element, it wouldn't work at all. But with this, there's something brilliant about it. Based on the amount of likes it already got on YouTube, I, it seems Portugal will choose this for Tel Aviv, and I would appreciate that choice. But at the same time, I'm afraid it might not be approachable enough for the majority to get behind it. I appreciate the song for being so special, but it's hard yet to imagine it being a strong performance piece as well. I think it could be possible, in a similar way that Yossi Papai Zorigo was for Hungary two years ago. But I will definitely look forward to see this in the live show. Two, Soraya Tavares, O Meu Sonho. I really love that marching band rhythm in the background. I hope she's a strong performer because this could be very powerful. Her voice that is so soft and quiet mixed with these drums make me excited. And there are some moments where it seems to leap forward to attack and then suddenly retreats back again into defense mode. So I can see this do really well if it's performed right with 
quite dynamic light changes that reflect the, the struggle of the song. And place number one, Matai, Perfetto. This is so beautiful. It gave me similar vibes as Salvador Sobral did when I heard his song for the first time. Matai's voice makes this feel different though, which is great. Surprisingly, Eurovision doesn't show that much diversity when it comes to people with African or, or Asian heritage. So I would love to see him bring this beautiful ballad to Tel Aviv. And it even reminds me a, a bit of the score music for the Zelda video games that I, that I love. So it even brings me back to my childhood. So that's my top 16. In fact, I would be happy with any of my top three going to Tel Aviv. They are all so different and will represent Portugal in a very authentic way. They might not win again this year, but I think they would do much better than last year. But what do you think? Who's your favorite? Tell me in the comments below. For now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.